Hello students, today we shall learn the topics varicose vein, venous insufficiency, deep vein thrombosis or also called as DVT in short and what is thrombophlebite. Now all this while we have been learning about or we have learnt about uh, what goes on um, with the circulation related to the arteries. Now here we are going to be learning some conditions or disorders or diseases what, uh, what is caused due to the venous insufficiency means what happens when the supply in of uh, blood through the veins are being affected. So varicose veins are nothing but uh, the superficial veins that normally becomes enlarged and twisted. You must have seen um, some on some people's legs. Sometimes you can see like you know pur deep purple or deep blue veins which are really curly and twisted and uh, you know, it, it just turns out to be very um, very you know squiggly or like you know like a spring kind of a thing. So and this well, there are various uh, factors to it um, you know the age and how uh, the age is one of the factors and also like this can also occur due to excessive um, standing. So that's what we normally say that all the, uh, the um, disorders like you know DVT and anything associated with the veins are even normally seen among the nurses because especially uh, they are due to their long working hours and uh, you know standing for a long time. Uh, nurses tend to get these uh, problems of uh, venous disorders or the uh, deep vein thrombosis. But again, it does not mean that every nurse will be getting it. If you take appropriate steps to follow for that and if you are able to, um, uh, what is that, uh, take precautions for that, then you would not be seeing this amongst the nurses as well. It is nothing to scare you. Okay. So now, um, varicose veins are superficial veins that become enlarged and twisted. And typically they occur under the skin in the legs. Uh, so this is exactly what I told you and uh, if you have seen any people uh, with such things like you know the squiggly, the blue and the springy veins and uh, veins which are really popping out or standing out and uh, that condition is nothing but your varicose veins and if you feel it is like deeper, very thick, um, it is like very uh, bulging and sometimes there people can complain and complain of excessive pain as well. So that is another uh, condition and that is like it which means it has gone deeper into the you know not just superficial but it has gone deeper into the muscles and that is when we um, say the condition could be uh, either thrombophlebitis uh, which is superficial again and also it could be the deep vein thrombosis. Now uh, most of the patients they experience here is um, the fullness or the pain so maybe the, the legs can tend to become uh, heavy and uh, even walking can uh, at times become very very difficult. So some of the complications associated with this condition of this venous uh, disorders could be bleeding as well as um, superficial thrombophlebitis which is nothing but as I just mentioned it can be really seen um, when you look at the patient's legs like the veins have become thick and it is dark blue and it is squiggly, it is curly and um, you know it is very uh, spring like. So um, this is what and it could be various reasons again as I mentioned to you age is one of the factors when the veins become weak, the walls are weak the valves are not functioning effectively in the veins where it is letting the blood flow only in one direction. So when there is again backward and you know flow of blood uh, back and forth you can say. Um, so the circulation is not happening right and that is when it starts to get clogged and as um, by now you would have um, understood that when you know when I am trying to tell you that the blood is getting clogged means it is not flowing appropriately so eventually it can result in clots. And again that becomes a very dangerous situation because once the clots are formed if it is static if it is in remaining in one position or one place it it's uh, it's still safe but when these uh, clots starts to break down and travel in your circulatory system that becomes a problem because you never know which vein or which blood vessel it's going to go and is, or to which organ it is going to go and that particular uh, vessel is going to get blocked off so that results in now the picture here is actually showing you the difference between the normal and the and when we say it is a varicose vein what the valves are supposed to look like. So this is what uh, the first picture showing you the blood that is flowing to the heart and you know that vein, uh, veins, veins or the venous system is what which carries the deoxygenated blood to the heart okay that for purification and um, what happens here is the healthy valve you know the, there are valves in the veins which is actually allowing the blood to just go only in one direction I mean this is there in every human being but for some reason these valves are not functioning effectively if you remember what I taught you in the valvular diseases of the heart it's, it's a similar concept here because the valves for some reason it is supposed to be doing the job of just sending the blood only in one direction but if it is um, weak, if it is floppy, it is being um, becoming very thick or it is being affected due to various other disorders of the organ, other um, 
diseases in the bo in the system then these valves can also get affected and due to any sort of infection and inflammation as well so similar conditions apply here as well and that is when the valves become very very weak so a healthy valve actually prevents the reverse flow of blood it is supposed to let blood flow only in one direction but here when you know that the valves are weak um, what happens is there is again back and forth flow of blood so in a varicose veins what happens here you can see that then in the normal way the blood is just flowing to the heart but again there is back and forth so reverse uh, blood flow due to the damaged valve so this is what i meant by saying when there is a back and forth flow of blood then the blood um, you know the tends to get clotted or clogged and that is when all these um, issues or the problems actually start uh, getting triggered now you can see here as i mentioned in the beginning you can see when you look at some people's legs this is exactly what you would notice you know the dark blue uh, purple veins and it is popping out it can be very uh, fat it's very uh, thick it is swelling it's swollen it's bulging and it can become very very painful actually so in the in such in uh, drastic conditions what happens is the entire leg can get blue and uh, the entire uh, veins you can see it is like um, fat it's swollen and it can be popping out so what is that happening here the valve is damaged and there is damaged and the bulging vein wall okay so when there is um, damage the the walls of the vein starts to bulge and again what happens here the blood collects in this vein and there is no adequate blood flow finally resulting what happens the valve is also not uh, uh, functioning effectively so this back and forth condition of clots now there are different types of varicose veins okay so the minimals a uh, minimal find of uh, such uh, conditions that you see in a patient just not uh, through the entire leg but just here there and everywhere mostly towards the back of the legs is where you see them so those are called as a spider veins and it's can it's uh, it appears as a spider okay so a tiny dot and then you can see most of the tiny blood vessels of the capillaries you can see how it is being affected and that's what actually starts to turn blue or when it starts to actually um, uh, the big, the disease actually begins reticular way uh, varices is nothing but it's you can see it is a bit more spread over and you know it feels like the these uh, spiders are actually connected and varicose vein trunk again you can see how the veins are squiggly and most of the legs um, a portion of the legs are being affected and it is more visible rather than the spider veins and chronic venous insufficiency means yes there is a severe severe problem and again chronic means you know that it's been going on for a long time and maybe this uh, varicose veins has eventually led to this particular condition of venous insufficiency so insufficiency means what again the uh, blood flow through the vein uh, through the veins is not sufficient enough or it is not getting sufficiently or adequately circulated to the heart and tropical ulcer so eventually this venous insufficiency means again you definitely know when you see a condition like this when there is redness swelling tenderness pain difficulty in walking just cannot keep the feet on the ground and when all these conditions occur you start to see that it starts to break open and again that is when you will, the, the formation of an ulcer begins okay it can be run in the families because as i told you common condition and may run in families pregnancy again it increases the chances of having varicose veins also it is seen in people who stand for long hours so this is what i mentioned about the nurses again for that um, it is not that as i mentioned to you nothing to scare you uh, not every nurse will end up with having this condition but again when you are wearing your appropriate stockings when you are at work and that is the reason why we wear that the uh, the tight compression stockings uh, so that will take care of your legs and even standing for long hours should not be a problem again as i told you not sitting for uh, for long periods of time you need to move around you need the circulation to happen and also uh, following a proper diet to drinking plenty of water and um, making sure uh, you know the legs are elevated in case when you uh, when you begin to see something like this uh, swelling and um, uh, make sure the circulation is actually happening and you are actually moving around and other factors as i mentioned again includes aging so that's one of the most important factors as you age all these uh, veins again starts to become very weak and obesity is also one of the most important factors lack of exercise and also leg injury can also be some of the for this very cause veins now the stages of um, the vein disease as i mentioned to you it all begins as the spider veins there's a bit of description here so I, my, this is just to give you a uh, deeper understanding of it eventually the second stage would be varicose veins as you see that spider veins are just here there and you can see that um, it they mainly uh, create a spider like appearance and that's the reason why they call it spider veins and um, can only improve the appearance but also prevent the progression of the venous disorder so um, in this stage itself when you get it consulted and when you get treated then most of the complications in the future can be actually avoided 
The second stage from the uh, spider veins would be the varicose veins. So again, you can see that it's becoming more prominent and most of the links are being affected. And also you can start to see that the larger veins are actually being shown up very clearly here. Again, there'll be the appearance would be like, as I mentioned, the, the veins will start bulging. It is more blue in color. And also, um, you definitely know that this is going to be start increasing where the patient is going to be feeling pain and he will not be able to carry out his daily activities. Eventually, there can be leg edema. As I mentioned to you, again, this is because of the, you know, the backlog and the, the, because of the circulation not happening properly. And this is going to put a lot of pressure on the, on the right heart system. And because of that condition, again, as I mentioned, um, causes edema and uh, conditions of swelling in the extremities as well. From this, again, if, you, um, if it is not still taken care of, you will start to begin, you will begin to see the skin changes occurring and there can be redness and, you know, the, um, you know, the patient can start begin to feel the heaviness in the legs and also moving around and taking care of um, himself and the, uh, and the daily activities can become a problem. The last stage would be the leg ulcers, okay? So that's when, as I told you, um, uh, the deeper conditions where the, red, uh, the leg really becomes red and swollen and painful to touch. And it can also become very itchy as, at times, okay? And um, so constant uh, caring is important. Moving around mobility is very important. Um, you know, even when you're sitting, you want to ensure that you're lifting your legs up and sitting, not just putting down because that edema can get reduced. And many things like that. And also make sure when you're on uh, treatment, then make sure you, um, the medications are followed appropriately because as I mentioned to you, the complications can result in having clots. And when this starts traveling, can become as well. Now, the clinical manifestations, the veins um, appear to be dark uh, blue or dark uh, purple in color, and they become twisted, they're bulging, and uh, also like they're very thick, okay, and uh, they can, uh, the legs tend to become very fat, and you can see the entire legs become swollen, and again, what you can see is, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the walking becomes very difficult, the patient can be also complaining of severe pain, um, heaviness in the legs or achy, and again, cramping kind of a feeling and also uh, worsen pain after sitting or standing for a long time. So that is why we say that whenever the patient sits, do not sit for a long time. After a while, just get up and start moving around so that the, the circulation is happening. And again, itching around one or more of your veins. So as I told you, itching can be also one of the main problems, but do not make, uh, itch and make sure because your skin is already very tender and you do not want to cause any more um, uh, skin disruptions or causing any kind of uh, tear in the skin and we do not want any kind of infections happening and uh, there's definitely going to be skin discoloration around these veins as well. Means skin discoloration is nothing but the color of the skin actually tends to change and eventually as I told the condition becomes um, uh, complicated and even progresses again the skin can become very leathery kind of appearance and um, you know uh, eventually leading to ulcers um, and even bleeding as well. So that is the complications as you see in this picture ulcers, blood clots, and bleeding. How do we diagnose this particular condition? Yes, definitely a physical examination and followed by ultrasound is the best way to go about it. And uh, in, in deeper um, studies, yes, a venogram. So again, uh, in, with contrast, when you're trying to do a, like an angiogram, what we said, and so similarly, you do a venogram, so you're trying to inject contrast into the, um, into the peripheries and you're gonna check how much of circulation is actually there and how it can be diagnosed and ruled out. And again, the um, includes both uh, medical management as well as surgical management. Ma medical management is in the initial stages and uh, the conservative management will include like, um, as I mentioned, leg exercises, mobility, leg elevation, very, very important when you're sitting and wearing compression stockings. So that is the, the picture here shows actually the person actually pulling on his compression stocking. Compression stocking means what? It's very elastic. So that actually keeps the vein in place and you know, there's no more sagging or uh, like you know what you call that bulging effect so it's compressed and again the veins are going to do perform their job because all we need is the vein is supposed to be sending up blood only in the one direction so we do not want that um, you know that edematous condition occurring as well so that is the reason why compression stockings are worn and the surgical man treatments are also there because various measures are there because um, depends upon how extensive the disease is like we can cut the vein and we can start a, you know pulling the vein and ensure that that uh, um, squiggly or the curly veins are actually removed and even stripping is another procedure where we are trying to cut off the vein which is extensively curled and making sure you're just straightening it out and then making sure the circulation has actually been retained. And um, other procedures like laser therapies and radio frequency ablation, all these are, and also sclerotherapy, it's also one of the, one of the medication that you inject into the veins and that is actually going to take care of that particular condition. 
the medical management again um, in the beginning stages no drug um, again um, you know uh, will be uh, given so maybe the uh, doctors will start telling them about the conservative sort of management but eventually as you tend to notice or begin to notice that yes it is becoming um, very painful or you can tend to feel that the pain is increased and definitely go to go get a consulted and get the medication or the treatment right away so uh, most of the time it would be like making sure like uh, drugs for the ulcers for example you know uh, the platelet inhibitors so again what happens is we do not want that uh, uh, like uh, you know the clot formation happening and so all that so just to ensure that you're going to be on um, uh, what is it thrombo and uh, th uh, thrombolytic um, medications and uh, just to ensure that um, in case if you know that uh, there is some kind of uh, uh, infections to it for example as I told you leading to an ulcer and then uh, bleeding and breaking of the skin so all this can actually be treated so because we do not want any further infections occurring so again antibiotics may also be given and um, you know fibrinolytic uh, therapy again because again uh, we do not want the uh, clots formation as well because uh, you know clots are quite dangerous because once it is formed and in case of it breaks then that becomes a problem because as I told you it can travel in any direction and causes obstruction of vessels. So this is a, a sclerotherapy, as I mentioned to you, the drug that has been injected, uh, especially in the small spider vein. So that's what you do, and it's very easy uh, treatment. And you know, uh, when the moment you start begin to uh, see this, and uh, the sclerotherapy can be uh, done again. It could be I don't know about the how um, expensive, but yes, it is definitely um, worthwhile having it done and making sure that even the initial stages itself, um, this particular disorder or the condition is being treated. And in here, the most commonly used um, agents or the, um, uh, for this uh, sclerotherapy will include the hyperton, hypertonic saline, uh, sodium tetradecyl sulfate, polydoconol, and chromated glycerin. Okay? And which is what happens is this is a kind of preparation of the, the chemical composition of this particular sclerotherapy drug and that is actually directly injected into the vein and then you know that particular spine condition will be treated. Now, as I mentioned to you, vein stripping. So vein stripping or vein ligation, as I told you, are going to be cutting off that uh, vein, the, the, the head and end of that vein stripper. And again, what you do is um, how we actually remove that excessive curl. And you know, it, uh, it, it's, you can see that the stripper, how it is being done externally and the vein is being removed actually. The vein stripper enters through this groin incision because now we, the top you can see like the funnel kind of thing. So that actually happens in the groin, okay? So you'd make a small cut in the, in the groin area and you in, insert that and again uh, it is being extended or pulled or the vein, depending upon how severe the disease is, the surgical procedure is being done. And another thing is a fl uh, phlebectomy, okay, where a um, very aesthetic method of removing the varicose vein. So usually requires local anesthetic and especially useful for um, these kind of uh, uh, areas where you know where, where, where you have the veins uh, sitting like this. So what you're going to do is you're going to be uh, cutting it off so you can uh, like a hook kind of a thing we're going to be cutting it and what happens here like the subcutaneous tissue and you can see what happens what's happening in this particular condition so the vein um, it's like being pulled and again it is being ligated so that is what is the uh, phlebectomy uh, so it's like the but ectomy is nothing but like the removal so all now, the nursing management for this particular um, case, assessment of the varicose veins, assessing the type of pain, assessing the patient's level of activity, movement disorders, and just checking on the severity of the disease, okay? Is there any kind of um, temperature changes in the lower limbs, like whether there is warmth and swelling, checking for edema, and also um, improving, uh, improvising his nutrition status, and also the history of any kind of previous dissociated or related. <coughs> the nursing interventions, will include, uh, you know, helping the position, patient uh, um, acquire or uh, maintain a proper position and comfort, regular exercises, leg elevation, and the frequent position changes, and mobility is very important, making sure that he does not sit or he's, he's just not in bed, uh, making sure he moves around, and also helping or also um, educating or uh, telling the importance of wearing the compression stockings and also administering medic um, analgesics, that is nothing but to, uh, com uh, to um, combat the pain or the discomfort due to this particular. Nursing diagnosis will include acute pain, impaired skin integrity, impaired physical mobility, imbalanced nutritional status, uh, anxiety, uh, disturbed body image. Yes, why would you say that? Because you know that the patient's legs have become very uh, dark, um, it's, uh, it's swollen, it is thick, 
and uh, you know uh, it may not look uh, it's not a very good um, appearance again um, so that is why we call it as a disturbed body image and last but not the least will be the depth so the knowledge deficiency again the nurses will be educating the patient and family about exercising um, watching your um, body weight so obesity controlling that um, making sure that they eat right having a good diet high fiber diet and low salt very very important um, avoiding uh, wearing high heels again that's going to put a lot of pressure so again avoid them elevating the legs uh, sitting in uh, changing positions um, the sitting and standing positions really and with that we come to the end of this topic and we'll be continuing in my next session thank you for your time